Campaign 2018 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, Marshfield Clinic Health System, AARP Wisconsin, and Campaign 2018 partner Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Red Arnold of South Milwaukee is a Republican candidate in the 7th Senate District. Red, welcome back to Wisconsin High. Thank you. Um, top issue in your campaign? Two. The first one is the same as last time, DPC, direct primary care. Yeah. They actually uh, tried to uh, make it the foundation for Medicaid and Medicare here in Wisconsin. And it uh, passed the assembly, but failed, where everything else seems to fail in the last couple sessions. Uh, why, is, why is that so important? Because with healthcare, uh, Obamacare is still uh, in the system. And even if it's not repealed, this actually is a loophole within the system, section 1301A3. And what it is, is uh, third party payers, non-existent. You pay your primary care physician directly, average about yes. two bucks a day, 60 bucks a month. Right. Everybody can afford that. And so if we implement that along with Medicaid and Medicare, the cost will come down so dramatically that any budget issue really won't be a problem. We can address that. Uh, separately, but yeah, so I, I don't know if that answers your question. Well, um, would that be a way to preserve and protect health care in the rural areas? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, the rural areas actually, uh, it, it's, it's more beneficial there because most of the time, any anytime you would see a specialist or need, to, uh, you have to drive a long way, but your primary care physician is there. And your primary care physician can take care of uh, pretty much uh, anything that doesn't involve, you know, the uh, cancer, car wreck, heart attack, surgery specialist, break your arm, stitches, you need to boil lands, EKGs, delivering a bait. All doctors are trained to do these sorts of things, uh, but the way the system is set up, it, it, it's just not feasible. So that's why direct primary care, it brings that back to the, uh, the, the new topping on an old burger. The old time doctor takes care of most of the stuff until it gets to the point where you need to have uh, a higher level of care. Does the state government have a role in recruiting and retaining doctors, nurses, other healthcare professionals, Red? I don't know if it, it would go to that, but if you're talking, I don't know if you're referring to the VA, but the, state, uh, the state's role could be, say for example, if we implemented the direct primary care model, mm -hmm. the $60, just like if you enroll in Medicaid and Medicare, you have a, a liaison that, that takes care of that. So you say, I wanna choose from this list of doctors, you choose that doctor, and then Medicaid and Medicare prepays that doctor the $60 or the $70, whatever it is. So you can implement it government-wise that way, and then therefore the patient doesn't have anything to worry about, and if they need to see them three times in a week or just only three times in a year, it's already taken care of. So that would be the way that it would be implemented uh, at the state level, if that no, answers your question. Another healthcare question. Mm -hmm. State government and Delta Dental have a program, they subsidize dental clinics in low-income areas. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're, if you're familiar with it. My question is, if you are, should it remain a priority in the next Medicaid budget? Uh, I actually, my, he, I think he just retired, but uh, my old dentist, that, that's what he would do. Um, and, and dental, the cost of dental compared to the cost of regular medical, it's so minuscule. Even if, when you're on insurance, you pay you know 700 for your health insurance, but you pay seven dollars for dental. So if they're going to keep that aspect of it, uh, that's fine. But that doesn't necessarily mean we can't do something similar uh, with dental care. So um, again, that's not necessarily my focus, but it's something that I would definitely like to look into once we finally get the medical uh, care part of it out of the way. As you campaign on the seventh, do you hear about issues with caregivers? AARP says there are 578,000 caregivers in Wisconsin who may be caring for family members or neighbors. Do you think we need new laws or to strengthen the, the, the ability of caregivers to partner with, uh, when, when, when someone they care for is hospitalized, do they need new rights, uh, new rules, allowing them to be a partner in the healthcare decisions? Maybe it's not an issue that's on your screen. It's not, but um, okay. I mean, uh, Power, uh, does that get, you're referring to like, does that get into the power of attorney or, or is that, yes. uh, that's not something I really delve into, but okay. I could, I could okay. theorize if you'd like me to, but. Uh, that's fine. Yeah. Um, transportation impasse, paying for our highways. You've done some work on this issue. How do we pay for our highway future? Um, the DOT, uh, there's a lot of things wrong with the DOT. 
I've seen um, that on your website. You have some yeah, concerns. Yeah, actually, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm producing videos right now that go into it, but there's a lot of stuff that people don't even know. Um, a lot of, and, and again, it's not, I even, I even talked to the Attorney General on this, and, and most of it isn't necessarily even illegal, but uh, you know, neither is taking food out of the grocery cart of somebody in the grocery, you don't do it, but it's not illegal. There's, I wanna be careful what I say here, but um, example, and it's, and it's almost like the, to, to use an 80s term, the Care Bear stare. They always get into the huddle and come back with the same thing as if there's gonna be something different. They do a road and then the next year or the year afterwards, oh, we just forgot to do, magic term, sewer laterals. And then the next time it's, oh, well now we need to do the grading. And oh, now we need to do the electrical. Oh, now we need to do the, it's basically a racket that nobody talks about because unless you're actually, it, it, or uh, another example, if you're looking to buy, say, a Volkswagen Beetle, then all of a sudden you start to notice how many Volkswagen Beetles there are. Unless you're actually actively looking for it, you're not gonna notice. You'll just notice that, oh, the road is torn up again, okay? These are the types of things that are going on in the DOT. And again, it's not illegal, but it's, it's not really on the up and up. That's where most of the costs are being. Uh, and then you've got billing, uh, double billing that, you know, the accountants just say, you know, well, well, we'll worry about that later, or this is gonna cost 17 million. And now in September, the weather's getting cold. It's half done, it's been sitting there. And oh, well, it looks like it's gonna cost 32. Yep, Bob, this is 102 out of 102 times, but that's, a, that's what's really going on with the DOT. And nobody's, nobody's willing to, to say it. So until we get those things corrected, do you see no need to raise the gas tax, the registration fee, or to implement tolling? Absolutely not. And here, here's the kicker, here's the kicker. I, and I will guarantee you this, if I'm not elected, all right, if, if they manage to, Governor Walker's the lone holdout on this, if they manage to get him to cave, gas taxes will go up. And here's the other thing. All right, 2020, all right, Trump's not gonna win. They're not going to win the election because people are going to look and say, well, Republicans, they raise the gas tax just like the Democrats, but the Democrats at least give away free stuff. So what are we doing? Everything that we work for is lost. All the surpluses that we've got is going to be, hey, here you go, here you go. Because I'm telling you right now, I'd do it. If I were a Democrat, I would I'd do the, and everything we've worked for, we lost because they don't want to address this real issue because, hey, you know, my buddy over here, and th that's just the reality of it. We haven't gone far enough in certain aspects. You'll notice, again, we haven't given the governor anything to sign in, what, two sessions? And then when somebody like Andre Jacques does prevailing wage, oh, hey, look at that. This is what the constituents wanted. This is what everybody else wanted, but lo and behold. So this is what needs to happen in the DOT because we raise gas taxes, we're done. And I'll make that prediction, I'll make a bet. I don't make bets that I can't win. Plain and simple. So. Local governments have been living with levy limits to control property taxes for 14 years. You local officials say some that hurts their ability to provide local services. Keep levy limits, loosen them, do away with them. When I was working at the state fair, a guy in uh, rural Wisconsin was talking about the levy limits and um, in the fire department, uh, consolidating services, etc. cetera. Uh, in a situation like that, um, maybe there is a need for raising levy limits, but what I've noticed is that what happens is almost like if you've got grandma's casserole recipe, Act 10, and you do everything, but ah, I just didn't want to add this, and I just didn't want to add this, not doing exactly what it's meant there for, grandma's recipe, recipe just doesn't taste the same. The same thing with Act 10. Most, well, we're using Act 10, okay? Are you at the 12%? I don't know, we're at four, or we're at six. So they're not using it to the full effect and then saying we need to raise levy limits. Now again, if that is the case to where they are using it to the full effect, why not perhaps you know, give, give a little bit of extra help for somebody who is doing you know, exactly what, what they're supposed to do. But again, if they're doing exactly what they're supposed to do and yet they still have this issue, my guess is there's something else there um, that really they're spending it on X, Y, and I can <laughs> I can give you a couple of examples uh, of local, right, right in my district, of the stories that I've heard, things that I've witnessed that, oh, that's where the money's going? Uh, yeah, so uh, e even if they're, they're using it to the full extent, more than likely there's other things that they're not doing uh, fiscally responsibly um, to make sure that, that the levy limit is adequate. Foxconn got a, a package of tax benefits, tax breaks, potentially, worth uh, almost three billion dollars. Now Kimberly Clark wants the same tax breaks. When should state government offer these types of tax benefits to private companies? What's the criteria? Well, uh, you know, any cost benefit analysis 
And, and Foxconn is, I, I will say it's a little bit different because you were literally bringing an entire new sector that was currently almost completely either overseas or on the West Coast here. Would you have voted for it? Oh, absolutely. Okay. But also, I think uh, Chris Kapang is one of the only other ones I'd vote against the Kimberly Clark. I, I think the state should stay, and last time we, you asked me about the Bucks Arena. No, don't pay for that if, if these businesses are sound. The thing with Foxconn is that most of everything that we're going to give to them is contingent upon other things happening. It's contingent upon employment, it's contingent upon jobs, it's contingent upon... Anytime you do that, there's almost no lose. It's almost a 100% win-win situation. So it's much different than just say, here's $100 million Kimberly Clark to keep this here. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not necessarily comparing apples to apples, but yes, I would have voted for Foxconn and I, I would vote well, currently on the way, on Kimberly Clark, the way it is structured. The current state budget uh, included a significant increase in state K-12 aid, aid to public schools. Um, as you go around your district, are you hearing that we need another similar big, big increase in the next state budget? Do you support that? Uh, yes and no. He, the problem really is we still have, uh, I believe it's 35% Wisconsin has 35% of kids uh, reading at an eighth grade level, 35% proficiency, and 18% in MPS. You want to throw more money at that? Uh, it's kind of counterintuitive. Um, so it's same thing with the DOT. You know, issues need to be fixed first in order for for more money and then of course you've also got private schools which of course there there are some disadvantages to private schools if the people who are who are uh, implementing them are, are in it not for you know education and for themselves it's, you get that with anything um, but uh, to increase aid it's a, who's not for curing world hunger okay but how do you do it so um, yeah that's that's a uh, another apples and oranges uh, dependent upon what what's really uh, what really what's the goal and what and how you're accomplishing it what, what's your thought then on how to how to improve test scores at MPS well it, if you think about uh, back during um, uh, the depression years these these people the one-room schoolhouses wood stoves blackboards slide rules and we sent a man to the moon so we've already done it right and, and a big issue and this is probably <laughs> this could be the end of my political career Really, honestly, the one thing no politician ever wants to say is parents. It's always something else other than the parent. We need to get them involved, okay? And I realize that there, there are certain aspects uh, of society, and my mom was an MPS teacher, my dad was an MPS teacher, they, they saw it. But when, when you're trying to also include the government fixing the schools and the government being the family, now if you lose, the kid loses on both aspects of it. So uh, I, I, I'm all for it, but uh, and a lot of things in the education system need to be separated. They should have their own budget, their own uh, uh, department, but everything gets lumped into education. And separating those things, you know, I think is, is really what needs to happen and nobody wants to do it. The Voucher of the Choice program has grown dramatically. Started out in Milwaukee, now we're seeing now statewide. Should it expand further, your position on choice? Well, if it's expanded statewide, I think that's probably <laughs> as far as it can go. But no, uh, again, school choice, if something's not working, I always use the example of the stop sign. If the stop sign, if nobody's stopping, your only hope is that for them to stop is to make a bigger, flashier stop sign. So if, if the public schools, which I, I never want a complete privatization of schools, I do think education is one of the things that should be, for the most part, public. But if we're not going to address it and the private schools are going to do it, Go for it, do it. You know, if, if, if you're working, say, your job and you don't like, go, go to another, or, or choose another career. So uh, who doesn't like choice? So having choice, I, I'm, the only thing I ever care about is, does it work? If it works, I'm for it, if it doesn't, I'm not. Plain and simple, so. Some Democratic candidates for governor said we could, over years, cut our prison population in half. Two of our prisons were built in the 1800s. Do we need a new state prison? Again, uh, why are they in there? Are we, I, I was just telling you before we started, uh, I, was, I, I was arrested for carrying a stun gun, facing a Class E felony with $50,000 as my bail, when the only thing I had was a speeding ticket. That's still on my record, okay? Why can't we fix that in society? Is this one of the reasons that, that uh, offenders keep repeating because they can't find good jobs because of that record? Why don't we fix that instead of prisons? Then it leads into, which I'm sure is probably your next question, legalization of marijuana or okay. possibly Let's you know, go there. dumbing down on the, or uh, leveling down on, 
on uh, drug offenses. And yes, uh, that I think is the only thing that my opponent and I agree on is that, yeah, I'm for medical marijuana and I'm also for recreational. I, I've been in contact with Don Quorum, who's a Republican senator in Colorado, uh, gathering information on how they did it. And uh, thus far, it's been succeeding. Now, you'll, you'll have naysayers, oh, this study says that, I'm sure I can find a study that says saliva causes stomach cancer when administered in small amounts over a long period of time. I'm sure there's a book out there on how to kill a rat with an oboe, right? You can find studies on anything, but use your eyes, use common sense. It's also a, a libertarian freedom issue. You can't necessarily tell me what, what I can put in my body, but yet we've accepted that from the government, and it's time we start peddling that back. UW system budget. We've had a freeze on resident undergrad tuition for six years. The governor would like to extend it to seventh and eighth year. Do you agree? I don't think he's going far enough. If you look at anything, big screen TVs, okay, 20 years ago, the big screen TV you'd buy now for 200 bucks cost $10,000 for inferior technology, all right? Same thing with computers, iPhones, uh, iPads. Most of the time, when it goes like this, the cost come down. Education is the only thing that has not done that. In fact, as, 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 as more people are, are using it, the cost has skyrocketed. Bring that back. I mean, you hear the stories, yeah, when I went to college back in the 80s, it was $1,500 for the year and that included room and board. Well, all of a sudden the government gets into loans, you know, hey, now all of a sudden the money's free flowing. That's what needs to be fixed. I'm not necessarily worried about how you know things are paid. That's what needs to be fixed. Bring that back because there's same thing with the, the healthcare professionals or the, the healthcare system. You know, you've got all these conglomerates and one of the, the, the PACs said this to me years ago before direct primary before I found direct primary case said, take a look, any hospital, and I, I've yet to buy a steak dinner. All right, any hospital, anywhere in the country, if you don't see a construction cones or, construction cones around it or a crane on top of it, I'll buy you a steak dinner. Nonprofits yet, wow, look at these new wings that make more money. And yet, uh, what is it, Ascension just closed down or wanted to close down St. Joe's and so, they're nonprofits. But what, they're closing it down because they're not making enough money? So yeah, these are the things that need to be fixed. And I don't care what side of the aisle it's on. You know, I, Trump went to the DC to drain the swamp. I'm gonna go to Madison to drain the lake because this needs to, this kind of, this, it just needs to stop. It needs to stop. Everybody's playing politics and they need to focus on taking care of the citizens and that basically means mo most of the time less government and and more freedom well uh any other differences between you and your democratic incumbent on november 6 you want to highlight no aside from he votes party i vote people and this just this is what i, I wore this today because it proves a point technology changes architecture changes but you know what doesn't change rights fundamental rights all right, I follow only three things, truth, justice, and the United States Constitution, all right? Th there's so many people out there that want to say words mean something different to fit their needs. Well, it doesn't. We have these rights. They were given to us back when this was the style. Now, I probably look ridiculous, but you know what? The same thing pertains. Our rights, our freedom of speech, our Second Amendment rights, uh, unreasonable searches to see, everything that is, that is granted in that Constitution still stands, and that's what we need to protect. And my opponent, and then there's uh, some people in my own party who would disagree with that statement. Red Arnold of South Milwaukee is a Republican candidate in the seventh assembly, or Senate district. Excuse me. The election is November sixth. Red, thanks for talking with uh, Wisconsin Eye. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Campaign 2018 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association. Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, Marshfield Clinic Health System, AARP Wisconsin, and Campaign 2018 Partner Milwaukee Journal Sentinel.